Welcome to continuing coverage of election 2013. Today we have the two candidates for Ward 7 City Council here in Brockton. Uh, we have Tim Sullivan and Shirley Asak. Welcome to both of you for being here. Thank Glad you. Glad to be here, Mark. Um, BCA and WXBR are co-hosting this to uh, get information out to all the voters in Brockton so you can make an informed choice on November 5th. We will start with opening statements and I will start first with uh, Tim Sullivan and then Shirley Asak for a minute and then we'll reverse it as we go throughout the debate. So Tim, you got a minute. Just a minute or two on this one. A minute on the opening. Minute. Yes. Good evening. My name is Tim Sullivan. I am the candidate for Councilor of Ward 7. For the past four years, I have served as your elected school committee member in Ward 7. I have worked very hard with the parents, teachers, principals, parent advisory councils from across the entire ward. Together our goal has been improving education for kids. I've also been in the public eye as a bus driver for the past 38 years and the past 14 years on the Board of Directors as a Commissioner of the Brockton Housing Authority, six years Treasurer and seven years Board of Director, Chairman. Now I want to work with you on other Ward 7 issues, crime, creation of ward <clears throat> creation of crime watches, roads, bringing in businesses, improving our neighborhoods. I ask for your help so we can work together on these important Ward 7 issues. I need your help on November 5th. Thank you. And now Shirley, one minute. Good evening. My name is Shirley Azak. I am a um, re lifelong resident of Brockton. I have... Um, I have my, I'm married, I've been married for 13 years and I have two beautiful daughters in the Brockton Public um, School System. I ask you to elect me as your Ward 7 City Councilor because I am dedicated to the city. Everything we have is vested in this city. I live here, I have started a business here, I'm a small business owner and I have everything we have is invested in the city. We have investment properties. So. When I make my decisions as city councilor, I will be thinking of you, residents, small business owners, and um, parents. So I ask you to vote for me as your um, city, uh, Brockton City, Ward 7 city councilor. I have um, been involved in my community. I've been involved in school, uh, in my children's schools. I was on the um, Kennedy School um, Council. And, um, also with my church, and I'm involved in my community. Thank you. Okay, and we'll have plenty of time to talk about life experience and everything as we go along. Mm -hmm. Ron, first question. Why did you decide to run for Ward 7 City Council? Obviously the position was open, but what made you decide that this is something that I'm going to do? Was it a passion? Was it an issue that came up where you wanted to change things? What was your motivation? First, Shirley. Okay. Um, I've always had an interest in, in Brockton. In politics, I've been involved with the elections office. I've worked as a elections warden for almost 16 years. So I've all, the interest has always been there. Of course, the opportunity was open because um, the current city council was running for mayor for, in the mayoral race. I want to make not necessarily a change, but make a difference in Brockton. I want to, as a resident, I see many things that aren't working that have issues and I would like to work together with my fellow counselors to to fix those issues to work on them this it's a great city we live in and I, I truly believe in it so that's why I'm running okay Tim I too do agree it is a great city that we live in and to get back to your question Chris McMillan the old Ward 7 counselor asked me to run and he endorsed me. That was put on the paper way back in August. And uh, so I decided then, yes, I'm the only one with experience. I had already had four years on the school committee. I already had uh, 14 years on other boards in the city. And I feel like I'm the only one that was how to get things done. Uh, one of the last debates, the two opponents of mine said, we can change everything, we can do whatever we want, and we're going to do this and that. And that's not how it works. Anybody going into the City Council already has to have at least five other votes to get anything passed in this city. And that's just how it works. Thank you. OK, 
Okay, any further follow-up on that question? I, I, I would yeah. like to follow up. I disagree with uh, Mr. Sullivan. He, he has stated, I never stated that I could change everything by myself. I, no, not you, the other one. Okay, but you just said that we both did, so I disagree with you. You tend to put it in false information regarding myself, so I'd like to clarify that. I believe it's teamwork, it's a community that I'm looking to, I'm looking to work with my community. It's a community effort. It's, I'm not going in there to change anything all by myself. 30 second follow up? Uh, no, no further questions. Okay. Um, my question is going to be about, uh, you both outlined a little bit about your life experience. Um, tell us why you're the better candidate for city council in Ward 7 and um, what you're going to bring specifically to the city council. Tim first. Number one, I'm going to bring experience. Number two, I didn't mention I moved to Brockton in 1972, which is about 41, 42 years ago. I've had five children. All of them went to Brockton Public Schools. All have graduated. Now my grandchildren are starting to go to Brockton Public Schools. And I love it here. When I first moved, I thought it was great. Brockton had everything from uh, movie theaters, shopping malls, uh, all kinds of little shops and venues. It all seemed to be slipping away, and I wanted to bring some of that back. Thank you. Sure. First of all, can I clarify, and Mr. Sullivan keeps saying that he has experience. He's not on the council. A school committee is something that's totally different. So I believe we're on equal grounds here. I am a small business owner. I know how to make um, business decisions. I have degrees in business as well as design. And um, I know what business owners are looking for. I know what um, residents are looking for, parents, as far as safety for their children. I know that's a big concern. and. Um, Small business owners, I think the biggest thing is um, customer service. People want customer service, somebody th to make the city a business-friendly place um, to keep them here and to attract new business to them. As far as um, you know, experience on the council, I know there's going to be things that are going to come up that I, we don't know what's going to come up once, they, once we're in council. So I don't think anybody's prepped to go in there and already have experience to know what to deal with. So I am prepared to take on anything. I'm committed to serving my community, to serving them on the council. And um, as far as, ex I have a lot of life experiences. Once again, I grew up here. I know the issues that the city has. I know the issues that parents have, that residents have, and that small business owners do. And um, so that's why I believe I'm the better candidate. Thank you. Okay, next question, Mark. Get a little follow-up on that. Follow-up, uh, sure. If you don't mind. Just a one minute follow-up. Okay. Uh, Miss Azaker. I'm sorry, it's Azak, not Azaker. Excuse me. Okay. Has stated that she has more experience than I do, and I totally disagree. I've been on the Housing Authority, which is a board in Brockton, for the past 14 years, and also on the School Committee, which is an elected board for the past four years, which the Mayor is the Chairman of. And both boards work similar to the City Council. You have to have the votes behind you before you do anything. I just wanted to make that clear, and uh, I really think I am the best candidate and the most qualified. Can I comment on that? Yep, yeah, 30 seconds. Um, Mr. Sullivan, you keep saying you're on the board of the um, Housing Authority. I found that to be a conflict of interest with you being on the board and also being a, running for a council seat. What do, you, what do you think? I disagree. I think ultimately when the election is over that um, can't, you probably can't serve on that board, I would, I would think. I'm not 100% I'm not sure, but I know there's laws about serving on different boards, but when you're running before you vacate, I, I, I'm not sure. Um, next question, um, is it my Trevor or is it yours? No, I, uh, I don't. Uh, uh, I've been doing this a while today, I think it's so mine. bear with it. Uh, mine is a two-part question, of which the two parts have no resemblance to the first or second. Now I'll ask the first question. Just, just a yes or a no on this, uh, because people may not be familiar with you necessarily. Uh, your opinion on the power plant, yes or no? No. No. Okay, let's move on. I'm not going to dwell. Okay. We see that. Yes, for a change. Okay. Uh, let's let's talk about uh, when you meet the residents. Obviously, you're both running for a seat that's that's vacant. 
when you talk to them, what is their biggest concern for Ward 7, and what do you say to them? Tim first. The biggest concern for Ward 7 is the roads, and naturally the power plant, even though it's the, probably the furthest away, they don't want the power plant. And I happen to agree with them. The people in Ward 4 do not want it, and the people in Ward 7 do not want it. So I don't want it either. But I'd like to see uh, some of the empty stores filled, some of the empty restaurants filled, uh, more police officers on the streets, and get the crime watchers back to movement again. Thank you. Shirley? I, I have been walking the streets of Ward 7, meeting a lot of residents, and I, I'll be honest, I actually enjoy it. I love seeing um, residents. I love feeling that sense of community, and I think people, it's hard when you first walk up to a door. You don't know what to expect because you get a little, you know, you're afraid of the rejection, but um, knock on wood, I haven't had that yet, and um, I enjoy talking to them. Honestly, I haven't, none of them have had any major issues. Um, you know, they've been very friendly. I think they, I've said to them that I would like to have more, uh, com more uh, meetings, make it easier for them to know when the meetings will be, uh, our, um, when our ward meetings will be, and um, getting them more involved. I think every, there's this, everybody's missing a little bit of that sense of um, community. Uh, we need to get back our community, uh, feel like we're one again. I. You know, they feel everybody's in their own home. They don't know who their neighbors are or what's going on in the next door to them. So I'd like to bring back that sense of community back to um, Ward 7. As far as um, filling, you know, storefronts, it, Ward 7 doesn't really have, we're pretty filled right now. The mall is, is the best it's looked in years, and um, I, there aren't that many empty storefronts. I believe there's only a couple of empty um, businesses in in Ward 7. Um, streets, uh, people haven't complained that much. I mean, some lights, but the, those are issues we're going to deal with once we're, once we're in office. And um, I will be there. I will be present for the residents. I will answer their phone calls. And I think that's what they want. They want somebody that's going to be dedicated to them, to answer them, and to, to get the job done. Following up on that, I actually give you a little more time, so I'm going to give Mr. Sullivan some time. Within the next question, though, on communication, how do you intend to communicate with the residents of, of Ward 7 as my, a city council? My plan, the first plan I had was to uh, combine the Montello Business Association and the ward meetings together and try to find a central location. Their, their meetings in the church right now, St. Edith Steins, and I'm trying to just find a central location for all of them. And to get back to Shirley's, I totally disagree that uh, the storefronts are filled and the, the biggest one is Chili's Restaurant on Oak Street, has to be filled right away. The people have been complaining about that since it's closed. Not to mention the other stores in the mall. I wasn't kind of worried about the mall, but there are empty stores in there that I want to see those filled too. Thank you. Okay, would, uh, Shirley, I'm going to let you answer that and then I'm going to ask a follow up. Okay. I believe Chili's and the Howard, the old Howard School are the only ones that are actually not filled now. They've all been filled um, from what I understand. So that's, you know, that's how I feel about Ward 7. I, I believe it's, it looks great. I, we can work on getting it cleaner. You know, I, I, a lot of our uh, community volunteers are cleaning up different parts of, this, of the city and I think that that's great. I would like the city to also take part of that, not just leave it up to the volunteers that are cleaning up the city. but. Um, you know, as far as storefronts, I don't believe they are closed. I do disagree, though, that you should combine the uh, the Montello Business Association with the ward meetings. They're two totally different things. That I don't think they go together. One's a, those are business owners that are discussing their issues, and um, the residents, I think, need their own meeting. Okay, I'm going to go back to communication. Um, ward meetings is one way to do them. There are other ways to communicate besides ward meetings. Um, any new approaches, novel approaches, new technology, old technology? Um, I asked you both with the third person in the race about uh, cable TV and, and radio and everything like that. Just your thoughts on how to get the word out and how to get people more involved. Shirley. Um, I would love to use the, ca like you had mentioned during the last debate, I would love to use the cable um, channel 
to get the dates out or even for the meetings use the radio here for to let residents know when the meeting is there's um we can do in you know internet we get emails that's something that we would need to get directly from the residents you know email them directly it's, it could also um, it's already posted on it's already posted on the Brockton website I think there's many different ways we can get the residents even talking to them door to door doing a little flyer to remind them I think people need to be reminded when the meetings are sometimes they might jot them down and miss them so I think just communication in general no matter what it is it's going to work to get the residents out to these meetings thank you Tim yes uh after our last debate, it surely was there. Uh, I totally agree that the cable TV should be a part of our communication to the people of Ward 7. And now to the radio station, which I never thought of before. I wasn't even sure where it was, Ron, until tonight. I know. And uh, yes, it can be used two or three times a month just to let people know what's going on. Mm -hmm. It's a good communication, as well as Facebook, as well as the Internet all the social media. I think that all works good, just to let people know what's really going on. Thank you. Thank you. Juan? You both alluded to, um, well, Tim, especially you alluded to filling storefronts. Um, how do you fill a storefront, both of you? I mean, how do you go about filling a storefront? Shirley first? Once again, I said that we don't have many that are empty in Ward 7, but I think making making it easier for businesses to deal with city hall or make it making it friendly for us first of all making it easy for them to come in and want to do business here in the city and that's it's it's not just one thing it's many things it, of course it has to be safer it has to we have to provide some, some interest for them to want to come in and want to do business in our city and um, I'm, once again, I'm all about customer service. I think we have to be there for them, answer their questions. If they call and have questions, have somebody answer them. The the hard I hear that a lot of times people call and it's hard to even get the right person or the right department to speak to. So it's it's all about being there for them, helping them if they need certain paperwork or letting them letting them know who to contact, um, making it easy for them to come into our city. Tim. Yes. Sir. My plan would be to do it a little bit in reverse. In other words, I would try and seek out people for the empty stores, you know, like the Howard School, number one. That's the biggest one in our ward. It's an abandoned building. Yes, the school department does cut the grass, but that's it, nothing else. The city has to come along, plow, plow the driveways. The old Chili's restaurant, same thing, try to seek a, a new person to take it over. A restaurant chain, maybe somebody call them and say, "Look, we have an empty store here for a couple of for a couple of years. What all moving in here? You know, just like a friendly atmosphere to bring them in." Okay, on friendliness and cus customer service, both of you have different experiences. Um, Shirley, you own a business that you sell flowers to clients, and I know you're being nice, not saying the name of the business, Tim. You do customer service every day, driving, driving the back bus, and dealing with the housing authority and dealing with the parents of the kids in the schools. So, do you think? Here's my first part of the question: Do you think the city of Brockton is customer service friendly to its clients that try to do business with it, both residents with like a tax bill question or a business coming in to locate? And if you don't, what would you do differently, Tim? First. And the answer is I do not think the city is helpful to the customers with their uh, customer service or their customer relations, however you want to put it. That uh, you remember a year ago we had trouble with the meters. It was just like walking into a stone wall. You had no answers. Nobody wanted to even talk to you. And if you had a bill of fifty or sixty thousand dollars, you were on your own. You know, luckily that whole thing got straightened out quite a bit. And uh, that is not my style. I like to handle things right, right at the front, as it is now when somebody calls me about a problem on the school department or the housing authority. It's taken care of and fixed right away. And I think that's the way it should be. Sure. I, uh, 
I don't believe City Hall is customer friendly. I've had exp personal experience there and I, I think we can work on it. it. Once again, it's a group effort. We do need to make it um, easier for people to friendly or not so standoffish, not, not feel, make the residents feel like they're on the, you know, the wrong side because everybody has issues for whatever reason. Once again, you know, a lot of people have problems with the water department with their bills. And as counselor, I would like to be there for them to deal with these issues, take them to City Hall, go with them to figure out where the problem is and, um, and, and help them work with it, work with it, make, uh, resolve the issues with them. That's something that I didn't realize I had available to me when I had uh, problems. So I would like to be there for them, give them some customer service. And, um, you know, we're all, we're all working together with pe workers at City Hall. I would like to see them, you know, maybe if they understood the issues also, it would make it easier for them um, to help the residents. Thank you. Brian? What inefficiencies do you see in the City Council as it stands right now, if you see any at all? first I, I mean I don't see any specific anything specific with with the city council right now okay. yeah they seem they can't seem to agree on every single subject that comes up like the power plant for example there's there's way too many pros and cons that groups should get together and just vote on it you know I was under the impression that it was already gone now it's coming back again and uh, just to be more consistent. Okay. Um, school committee has hearing visitors where people can come and talk to the school committee. Um, they don't get an answer. They just can speak to the school committee and bring up an issue. Do either one of you think that that's a good idea for the city council? Tim first. Yes, I do. It's uh I mean, you're right, there is no answers, but it gives you a chance to write down their notes, write down what they're feeling, and you can look into it. You know, after the meeting, I can even take their number and call them back, you know, if I thought it was real important, which I have done in the past. And I think the city council should do that as well. Okay, sure. I, I believed it was being done. I mean, the council meetings are open to the re residents have a to all they haven't all attended mm -hmm. no okay well then i think it should be then i i have viewed most of them um i view all the ones that are aired the finance meetings all that and where i have seen residents um attend so i do believe then they should be open allow somebody to come in listen to their views know what their um what the issues are and then work on them I'd like to, I, I would like to do that on a ward level, and that's what I would like to bring the agenda in front of the ward residents, my Ward 7 residents, and have them work with them, and then bring my decisions to City Hall in front of the council. Just, just one quick follow-up on that, Chuck. Sure. Both the uh, school committee and the Housing Authority had that hearing of visitors, and what happens is you get three minutes to make your case, and if they're getting real close to making it, and a minute has gone by, the mayor runs the meeting and she'll, she'll let them go. At the uh, Brockton Housing Authority meeting, I run the meeting, and I, same thing. If they're getting to the point, I let them go as long as they can to make that point. And I just really believe that is a good, good thing. Even though there is no answers, no feedback, it's a good thing to happen. Surely any more? Well, I mean, I'd like to see them eventually get feedback, eventually get their answers, because there's nothing more frustrating than bringing up an issue and not having an answer for it. So I, I would like to see them eventually find a way to get answers for the residents, not just let them talk just to talk. That would drive me crazy. So, Just so you know, the present rules don't mm -hmm. allow for it at the city council. Right. It would have to be probably an ordinance change to do it. And I always kind of wondered with uh, towns around us, with boards of selectmen, you can do a uh, open, you know, a uh, hearing of visitors. Mm -hmm. We do it with the school committee that I'm on, and it's just kind of, I guess, it's wishful thinking on my part. Mm -hmm. Ron, I agree, Mark. Oh, you wanted me to ask a question? Um, I'm just curious <laughs> what we have for time left. <laughs> we got about eight minutes of time. Okay. One more question. Very good. Uh, what is your financial acumen? Because uh, actually, you're the finance committee. Uh, 
what is your background in that? You, uh, will you be able to understand everything that's brought up as far as making those decisions and voting? Sure. Uh, go ahead, Tim. I'm first? Yeah, go for it. Yeah, my, uh, as I stated in the opening, I was on the House, and I still am on the House and Authority, and I was treasurer for six years. And as treasurer, I had a $1 million per month budget, which did not include the wages. That's all their bills, all their uh, Section 8 vouchers that I had to pay, and every other small thing that came up, but not the wages that was separate. And like I said, that was a million dollars a month. And that budget had to be budget. I mean, that budget had to be balanced, and balanced every single month for the full 12 months. And like I said earlier, I think I had the experience to do it. So a $12 million budget per year is pretty good. Shirley? Um, I've had my business for almost eight years, and um, I balance the budget constantly, and I know how to work with budgets and how to not overspend and how to read budgets. So um, I'm, I'm prepared for the job, but with any new job, I know there will be possibly some things that I may not have come across, and I'm willing to learn, and I will work with my um, fellow councilmen, and I will, I, I will get the job done. I will do whatever needs to be done. Can we do a follow-up there? Uh, quick one? Time? Yes, okay. quick one. How would you have uh, voted on the uh, city budget as it was presented a few months ago? Uh, all but two councillors voted for it to approve it. How would you have voted? Oh, Shirley first. Okay. Um, I believe you're asking about the tax increase. The, 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 I would have voted it, but I would have voted against it. I believe that there was we could have worked something else out. I agree with uh, Shirley the same thing that the taxes our taxes are high enough as it is. We have to find another way to uh, fund our city to make everything work. I, I'm well aware we need money for the police, fire, public works, and I know taxes are our income. But to increase the taxes at this time, when everybody right in the middle of the government shutdown and everything else, I think it was a bad move. Okay, we will go to closing statements at this point. Um, Shirley first. I believe I am the best candidate um, to serve you as your Ward 7 City Councilor. I have experience as a small business owner, a parent, um, and a resident of Ward um, 7. I am dedicated to getting the job done. I will do whatever needs to be done because I invested in the city. Everything I have is here. And um, I will work for you and with you to bring our voice to City Hall. I hope you will vote for me on November 5th. That's um, just in a few more weeks, so I hope you vote for me. I'm, my name's the first name on your ballot, Shirley Azak, and I look forward to working and serving you as your Ward 7 City Councilor. Thank you. Thank you, Tim. Thank you, Mr. Ron Van Dam, for giving me the opportunity to speak directly to the Ward 7 people. And thank you, Mark Lindy, for the good discussion at all the challenges facing us in the Ward. I am a consensus builder. I built a consensus that saved the Raymond School after the superintendent had condemned it. I fought for major capital improvements at North Junior High, the Raymond School, and six others, where the idea just seemed hopeless. The mayor put myself and four others on the Green Roof Committee, and we had raised $34 million for the roofs doors, windows, ceilings, and some outside repairs at eight of our schools. My hall hallmark is a constituent service. I will work with, the work with you on crime and building crime watches in every neighborhood in our ward, on improving our roads and making our neighborhood more livable, on advocating for serious and in finding a restaurant to replace the one which is the old chili on, East Street, on Oak Street. I am Tim Sullivan, and I ask for your vote on November 5th, and I pledge to you my entire being for working with you to improve Ward 7. Thank you. Thank you both, and thank you, Ron. Thank you, uh, and thank you. Great to educate the voters in Ward 7 and around the city. Um, most importantly, um, you have a choice, voice your choice, get out and vote, top the turnout in the preliminary election. Uh, because there will be new city councilors, as is evidenced by the both of the folks here in this ward. So thank you for watching, and stay tuned for more election coverage here in the City of Champions.